already know that it is never too late. It is never too late to start the Bible in a Year reading challenge. You can simply go to my Instagram. You can go to the bio. You see a link tree link in the bio. You can click the link. You can download the Bible in a Year reading plan, which you can actually get on an eight and a half by 11 or 11 by 17 printout. You can print your copy. You can start the Bible in a Year today. It's never too late to start. And I'm gonna tell you something. Doing the Bible in a Year reading challenge is literally, legitimately the most exciting thing that can ever happen for your life. Okay, now, what you guys just witnessed in the live that I just finished is that we did Bible in a Year day 200 through 203. Friends, we have eclipsed the second hundred day of reading the Bible every day for the Bible in a Year reading challenge, and we've done an Instagram live now for all of those days. Right now, you're joining me for the readings for July 23, 24, 25, and 26, which is Bible in a Year 204, 5, 6, and 7. And later today, we are going to be doing 8, 9, and 10. That's right. By the end of today, we will be all caught up with the Bible in a Year reading challenge all the way through July 29, except for Naomi's living in the future because Naomi's from Australia. She's already actually living in July 30th. So, Naomi, you're ahead of us. It's okay. We still love you. You're in the future, but you can join us in the past for the Bible in a Year that we're doing right now. This is Bible in a Year uh, Instagram Live for July 23, 24, 25, and 26, which is Bible in a Year Days 204, 205, 206, and 207. Okay. 207 days in. Woo! Okay. And the readings that we did was 2 Chronicles 8, 11, all the way through 2 Chronicles 18, 34. We did Romans 8, verse 9, all the way through Romans 10, verse 13. We also did Psalm 18, 16 to 36, 17, or 37 to 50. Psalm 19 and Psalm 20. Okay, so Psalm 18, 19, and 20. Boom. Shakalaka. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound. Saved wretch like me. So, what are we doing right now? This is a Bible in a Year Instagram Live rapid fire. Let's start with the Old Testament, 2 Chronicles. I'm going to choose one highlight. Uno mas highlight from 2 Chronicles chapter 8 all the way through 1834. I'm only choosing one highlight. Friends, get ready for the highlight that I'm about to choose from 2 Chronicles, starting in chapter 8. Aha! And you guys, you can probably guess, I'm actually going to... I'm actually going to share a highlight first from yesterday's reading. I'm just going to read it to you. Listen to this. This is, the, this is a text I cannot miss sharing with you. Are you guys ready? for a text from 2 Chronicles chapter 7, which is literally one of the most amazing texts of all time. Ah, and my buddy Joshua Paul Borum just joined this live. He is going to be doing the live with me at 4 o'clock for July 27, 28, and 29. Can't wait to have you join me later at the College Place B&B, &B, my bro. Oh, Marco knows what verse I'm going to highlight. Marco knows what verse I'm going to highlight. Here we go. 2 Chronicles, chapter 7, verse 14. Never been more excited about a verse. Never been more excited than I am right now to read this. Listen to this. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Friends, have we ever in earth's history needed to humble ourselves and pray? I'm going to read this again. If my people who are called by my name. Friends, whose name are we called by? We're called by the name of, come on. If my people who, will, who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face. How do we seek God's face? 2 Corinthians 3.18 by opening God's word and praying for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, we're beholding him as in a mirror and we are changed from glory to glory to be more like Jesus. 
If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Let me ask you a question, friends. Have we ever needed God to heal our world more than we do now? If my people, 2 Chronicles 7 verse 14, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Mind absolutely blown. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Okay. highlight that I'm going to actually do from Bible in the year 204, 5, 6, and 7 though is from 2 Chronicles chapter 9, the words of the Queen of Sheba when she came and saw Solomon and all of his wisdom and glory, right? When the Queen of Sheba comes, listen to her words. She says, I heard reports about how amazing you are, but listen to this. She says to the king after she sees the entire kingdom, she said, the report that I heard about you was true that I heard in my own land of your words and your wisdom. But I did not believe the reports until I came and saw with my own eyes. And behold, half the greatness of your wisdom was not told me. You surpassed the report that I heard. Uh, here's the point that I want to make to you, friends. If we will spend time in God's word every single day, praying for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in our lives, reading God's word, right? If we will spend time every day praying for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in our lives, reading God's word, guess what's gonna happen? People are going to see Jesus and they're gonna say, wow, Jesus is even more amazing than we thought. The wisdom that you have that comes from God is even more amazing than anything that I've ever seen. Because friends, when the baptism of the Holy Spirit comes into our life and we spend time daily praying for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit and we spend time daily in God's word and we receive the wisdom of God and the law of love is written on our hearts and our minds and Jesus is living in us and through us by the baptism of the Holy Spirit, suddenly our lives actually become a reflection of God's character of love to others and people are like, whoa, the God that you serve is even better than we thought. The blessings in your life and the promises of God's word are actually coming true in your life. And now that we see it happen, it's even more amazing than we thought it could be. You see, friends, you, we could be living the life. God said that he wants us to pray that his kingdom will come and his will will be done on earth as it is in heaven because he wants to fill us with the love of God so that people around us can see that God is good, that God is love. God wants to bless us and he wants to make us a blessing to everybody that we know. He wants to give us the blessings of King Solomon. Friends, I want you to start praying that God will give you the wisdom and the knowledge that Solomon had because God wants to do that for you as you pray for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit and you spend time reading God's word every day. There's nothing more exciting than that. All right, now, you guys probably already know from the New Testament reading for today, you probably already know the passage I'm going to pick. Can anybody guess? From Romans chapter 8 all the way through 1013, what verses am I going to pick to highlight? Can anyone guess what I'm going to pick to highlight? I'm going to give you guys a moment to guess. From Romans chapter 8 all the way through Romans chapter 1013, what verses would I choose to highlight? Romans chapter 8. Are you saying, you, Harold, you're thinking I would highlight verse 5? Let me see. Why would I highlight? Um, let me see. Why would I highlight verse 5? Because it was in my sermon last night, right? <laughs> For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. Good guess. Good guess, good guess, but no. Uh, a lot of you are saying 828. Okay, let me go to 828. Is that in fact, is that in fact the one I'm going to highlight? Oh, I love it. You guys, when you get crazy in the chat, you get me all excited. Here we go. 
Here's what I'm going to highlight. It's actually Romans 8. Romans 8 is the, is the chapter it's from. You guys were right. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to His purpose. You nailed it, but let's keep going. For those whom He foreknew, He also predestined, he predestined to be conformed to the image of His Son. See, God's wanting to change us from glory to glory to be changed to be like Him, right? Right? And He's chosen those. He's chosen all of us. Those of us who respond to God and let God change us, we are changed from glory to glory to be more like Jesus so that more people can meet Jesus. Okay. But here's the thing that I really want to highlight. Let's skip down to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Mm, 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 mm. Romans chapter 8. It says in verse... Romans chapter 8. Oh, I skipped over a page. Uh, uh, ah. For I am sure that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Friends, Romans 8, 39, 38 and 39, two of my favorite verses in the entire Bible. There is nothing in all of creation that can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Have you been feeling discouraged? Have you been feeling like you don't measure up? H have you been feeling like some of the, the choices that you made in your life have actually caused God not to bless you? Friends, there is nothing in all of creation. There is nothing in the heavens above. There is nothing down in the depths below. There is nothing in the entire universe that can ever separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus. And that's why we're doing in the, that's why we are doing the Bible in a Year Reading Challenge. It's because as we pray for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit and we spend time in God's Word every single day, okay? As we pray for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit and we spend time in God's Word every day, Jesus is literally living in and through us by the power of the Holy Spirit and His Word. The Word is alive. It's active. It's moving. It's changing. It's discerning of thoughts in the heart. And Jeremiah 31, 31 through 34, get this, says that the new covenant of God made possible through Christ Jesus is that He will write His law of love on our hearts and our minds. Wow. God literally promises us in Jeremiah 31, 31 through 34, that he will write the law of love on our hearts and our minds. Ah, there's my friend, there's my friend, Lindsay Hafner. Hello, Lindsay. Youth pastor extraordinaire. Absolutely loved Camp Myvedon this year. Thank you for the play that you wrote. It was amazing. So fun being camp pastor at Camp Myvedon because the one and only Lindsay Hafner writes the play every year and she does a beautiful job of telling the story of Jesus in many different numerous ways entertaining the kids it's absolutely amazing thank you Lindsay Hafner for what you do all right so um, let's go ahead and go to our Psalms our rapid-fire Psalm for the day and I've got to hurry because we got to go live at four o'clock for here we go. We covered Psalm 19 and 20 on Bible in a Year Day 203, 204, 205. Two, oh, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, 3, 4, nope, 4, 5, 6, and 7. This is Bible in a Year 4, 5, 6, and 7. We, psalmed, we, we covered Psalm 19 and 20, and Naomi nailed it. She just said, what verse from Psalm 19 would you highlight if you had to choose one? If you had to choose only one verse from all of, all of, all of, 
all of Psalm 19, which is a very, actually Psalm 19 is Psalm 19 1 all the way through 14, right? If you had to choose something from Psalm 19, you would choose verse one, the heavens declare the glory of God and the sky above proclaims his handiwork. Friends, look up to the heavens. The heavens declare the glory of God. All you gotta do is look around you in nature. All you gotta do is look at the sunlight shining down on your day. Today it's 106 degrees outside here in College Place. I'm sitting in the car with the AC on trying to survive this insanity. But the heavens declare the glory of God. Okay, we also actually, you'll notice we read Psalm 18, 16 to 36. Okay. And then also Psalm 18, 37 to 50. And the verse that I highlighted, can anyone guess the verse that I highlighted from Psalm 18? Psalm 18. Can you guess the verse that I highlighted, circled, put a star next to it? Amazing verse. One of the best verses in all of the Psalms. It's actually like literally the lyrics to a song that we sing nowadays. Can anybody guess the verse that I chose from Psalm 18? Everyone's trying to scan through it right now as fast as they can. Nope, not Psalm 18 too. It's way further down than that. It's between, aha, Lynn Rydell got it. <laughs> Lynn Rydell got it. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Psalm 1846, listen to this. The Lord lives, and blessed be my rock, and exalted be the God of my salvation. The Lord liveth, and blessed be the rock, and blessed be the rock of my salvation. The Lord liveth, and blessed be my rock, and blessed be my rock, the rock of my salvation. So exciting. All right. Do we even need to do one from chapter 20? That was so epic. I think we should end our psalm. Okay. I, I have to do Psalm 20, verse 4. Psalm 20, verse 4. Psalm 20, verse 4, friends. Get there. Check this out. It's amazing. Here we go. May he grant you your heart's desire. This is my prayer for you. This is the promise I'm claiming for you. May he grant you your heart's desire and fulfill all your plans. Friends, as we give our life to God, may he grant you your heart's desire. May he grant you your heart's desire and fulfill all your plans. That's the promise I want to claim for each and every single one of us today. All right. Lastly, on this Bible in the Year Instagram Live, where we are doing a Bible in the Year Instagram Live, rapid fire, Bible in the Year Instagram Live, rapid fire coming your way as fast as possibly can happen. Here we go. Booyah. Bible in the Year Instagram Live, verse, proverb, from proverb. I have to choose between Proverb 19, 26, 27, 28, 29, or Proverb 20, verse 1, or 2 through 3. Which proverb should I choose? What, what proverb should I choose? Ooh, I have to choose Proverb 20, verse 3, friends. I have to choose Proverb 20, verse 3. I love this proverb because somebody was trying to argue with me on Facebook today and I realized, you know what, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to argue with someone. I'm not going to let somebody hijack my Facebook page and turn it into a place to argue. Proverb 20 verse 3, here's what it says. It is an honor for a man to keep aloof from strife. Stay out of the strife. Get out of the argument. Stay away from it. You do not have to choose sides in the arguments that people are wanting you to, to get involved in, okay? You do not have to choose sides in the arguments that people want to draw you into. Oh, it's my friend Lee. Hi, Lee. So happy you could join us for the Bible in your Instagram Live. Yay, I'm going to wave to you. Pow. All right. So friends, it is an honor to keep aloof from strife. 
it is a good thing to stay away from strife. But every fool is going to be involved in quarreling. Friends, there are a lot of religious debates out there that the world wants to convince us to get involved in. They're telling you, you need to be the... You need to be the expert on women's ordination. You need to argue about that. You need to be the expert on the LGBTQ plus issue. Pastor Farr, you must take a side in this debate. You must get involved in the, in the pronoun debate. You got to get involved in the debate. You need to be an expert on the debate. Friends, we do not need to be experts on the debates that are happening in this world. The Bible says that we need to get rid of all worldly knowledge. We need to quit being a part of all of the Facebook debates and all the quarreling and the fighting because you look like a total fool when you get involved in that. It says, listen, instead... I have appreciated giving myself permission to not have an opinion or answer such debates. Yeah, listen, it's all a distraction. Paul said, I have decided that I am not going to preach anything except for Christ and him crucified. I am not ashamed of the gospel. I'm going to preach the gospel. I am not going to allow the Republican or the Democratic Party to be my focus. I am not going to allow legalism or liberalism to be my focus. I am not going to get involved in your arguments over worldly wisdom. I'm not doing it. I am not going to fight all of the different equality battles that are happening in the world because if we come to Jesus... If the Holy Spirit is poured out in our heart, guess what? We are going to have the love of Jesus for every single person on the planet Earth. Isn't that the thing that all of these equality movements are claiming that they want to accomplish? That there's going to be love for everyone? But then, but then when we focus on ourselves, we end up fighting each other. When I focus on me and I start telling people that I'm the standard that everybody needs to live up to, then I condemn everybody based on morality. So let me explain this to you. Legalism says that we have to measure ourselves by our ability to keep the law, right? Legalism says, Stephen Farr, you need to measure yourself and everyone else based on their ability to keep the law. Liberalism, on the other side, are you guys ready for what liberalism does? Did you know that liberalism is just another form of legalism except for here's what it does. Legalism focuses on the law being the thing that you need to keep. Liberalism does something very interesting. Liberalism says, I decide what's moral. Okay? And if I decide that I am the one who now sets up this standard of morality, or I let society tell me, this is the standard of morality, and then if I start telling everyone else, if you think like me, then you're good. Liberalism is literally, friends, just another type of legalism which I allow the world's compass of morality to become the standard that I measure everyone by and if you don't live up to it, I cancel you. So, legalism is something that people within religious organizations often do. But here's the funny thing. Legalism and liberalism are two different types of legalism and it's being done in the church. So what we've allowed the world to do is divide the church into legalism and liberalism, which is two forms of legalism, two different forms of legalism. In, in legalism, the commandments of God are the thing that I'm trying to live up to. In liberalism, the moral compass of the world is what I have to be like now, right? And so if I don't live up to those things, and if everyone doesn't live up to those things, then we cancel you. Friends. Do not be fools. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. He's the only way. He's the only way. You're not going to get into heaven by being popular because you subscribe to the morality of the world. And you're not going to get into heaven by trying to keep the Ten Commandments on your own. You need Jesus to live the law in and through you. You need Jesus to fulfill the law in you. Without Jesus living in and through you, it's impossible to please God. If you don't have Christ's righteousness, you can't go to heaven. Let me ask you a question. How many of you here have read the parable of the wedding feast? How many of you in the chat right now or that are watching on Instagram live, okay, have, have, have read the parable of the wedding feast? I need a thumbs up from everybody. I'm gonna make one last point then we're gonna end this Instagram live. How many of you here 
have read the parable of the wedding feast. Okay, we got one, two, Vonese has, Harold has. Okay, here's what happens in the parable of the wedding feast. The master of the house sends out everybody to invite people to the wedding feast, right? And people say no. And then he sends people out again, and then he and then the servants that get sent out the second time get killed, right? And then the master of the house sends people out a third time, and he says, listen, I want you to go to the highways, the byways, and the hedges, and I want you to invite people to the wedding feast because there's still room at my table. Okay, first of all, I want to say this. Guys, did you know that there's enough room at God's table for you? Did you know that there's enough room at God's table for you? Did you know that there's enough room at God's table for everybody? There's enough room at the table for me. There's enough room at the table for you. There's enough room at the table for your friend. There's enough room at the table. And the master of the house said, I want you to go to the hedges. I want you to go to the highways, the byways, and the hedges. You know where the, you know where the highways and the byways and the hedges are? That's where the homeless people like me sleep. Yeah, Stephen Farr, the guy who was a homeless person. Hello? Hello? This guy. God, God invited me to the table. You know what that means? God chose me to literally be a world evangelist and representative for God the Father. You know what that means? God has chosen you. If God's going to choose this guy from the highways and the byways and the hedges that was like literally sleeping in a bus stop, that was drug and alcohol addicted, and I, I had every problem in the book at 24 years old. Here I am sitting here today. Friends, can you guess my age? When I grow the beard, it gives you a hint because I got some gray in there that I'm older than I might look if I shaved the face, right? But at 40 flipping years old, yes, at 40 years old. <laughs> Von East knows my, she says, yes, I know your age. Okay, I was 24 years old when Jesus called me. Here I am at 40 years old. <laughs> Naomi's like, you're 21 and a half. Harold says you're 30. No, 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 I'm 40. Thank you, Harold. Flippin' love you. Lynn says, I already know that you're 40. Okay, I'm telling the world. I, Stephen Farr, am 40 years old. Marco says, I was in the highways and byways too. God chose me out of a bus stop. But here's the point I want to make. Are you guys ready for the point that I'm about to make? Are you guys ready? You've totally forgotten why I'm going to this parable by now. I'm going to slow down. I'm going to pause for just a moment. 25 going on 40. Thank you, Miss Joy Johnson. You are the best squirrel ever. Okay. And only you will get that. Here we go. When they get to the wedding feast, there is a man at the wedding feast that is not wearing the garment that the master gave. Remember, when the garment sent them out to invite the people from the highways and byways, he says, listen, take the garment and give it to them as a gift and tell them to come and wear the garment at the wedding feast. Remember? You're supposed to put on the garment. Oops. Okay. Are you guys still hearing me? Give me a thumbs up if you can hear the sound of my voice. Can you still hear the sound of my voice? Because sometimes it cuts off the sound if I get a phone call. Okay, so when they come to the wedding feast and all of the people are there, guess what happens? When they come to the wedding feast and all of the people are there, this is what happens. There is a man in there who is wearing something other than the garment that the master of the wedding feast gave him. And that is the man that the master takes and throws out into darkness. Friends, do you realize that if we are living our lives according to legalism or liberalism, we are literally trying to go into heaven by our own righteousness, either by the moral compass of the world or the moral compass of the Bible. We are trying to earn our way into heaven. And if you go to the wedding feast wearing any other robe other than the robe of Christ's righteousness, if you try to get into heaven based on your works, whether it be liberalism or legalism, you will end up being thrown out of heaven because you tried to get into heaven another way other than Jesus Christ.
Can you believe that? Sherry says, I can't believe you just said that. I'm really struggling that I'm not wearing the garment. Friends, we wear the garment by faith. Abram believed and it was counted unto him as what? Righteousness. Did you know that faith, which Jesus promises to give you if you ask him, the faith that you need, faith the size of a mustard seed, can move the mountain of legalism, of liberalism. It can move your need to accomplish what God's asking you to do by your own works. Jesus says, if you want to be saved, you have to have faith, and then he gives you the faith. Go study Ephesians chapter 6 on the armor of God. Every single part of the armor of God, helmet of salvation, breastplate of righteousness, belt of truth, sandals of the gospel, everything we need is Jesus. Jesus gives us the rope. He invites us. Friends, there is enough room at the table in heaven for everyone. I want to do something on the Bible and your Instagram live today. From this day forward, by faith in Jesus, I want you to know that you have the robe of righteousness. You do not have to keep trying to get ready for heaven anymore. You're going to be in heaven by faith in Jesus. Jesus is going to be your robe of righteousness. Jesus is going to give you the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The Father is going to give it to you because Jesus died on your behalf so that you can have it. The Holy Spirit is going to change you from glory to glory. Philippians 1 verse 6 says, Philippians 1 verse 6 says, Hey, guess what? He who began a good work in you will be faithful to complete it before Jesus comes again to take you home. That's what Philippians 1, 6, verse, verse, chapter 1, verse 6 says. Friends, the reason why I'm going to only preach Jesus Christ and him crucified in the gospel is because Jesus is the only way into heaven. He literally is going to be the one who gives you his robe of righteousness. He's going to live in and through you. He is the vine. We are the branches. Jesus is the way. I will never be ashamed of that. I'm not going to enter into the legalistic or the liberalistic debates because Jesus is the only way home. He's going to live the love of God through you. Come on, let's go. Can we get excited about the fact that Jesus has invited you into the kingdom, that Jesus is giving you his robe of righteousness, that Jesus is giving you his signet ring? Did you know that we're all the prodigal son? Did you know that everyone born into this world is the prodigal son? and that God has made a way home for you, you need to be excited about this because you never have to be worried about whether or not you'll get into heaven again. You're going to be in heaven. I'm going to see you there because Jesus, because when we, it says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him will not perish but will have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn you but that through him you can have eternal life. We gotta get excited. And you know what, friends? When we actually, here's why we want to quit trying to earn heaven. This is why what I'm saying is so important. Don't miss it. This is probably the best Bible in your Instagram live we've ever had. Why? Because the Holy Spirit of God is moving strong in this moment. Because he wants you to know something. If we will start believing in Jesus Christ, that he has done enough to save us and get us into heaven if we will actually put faith in Jesus and accept his robe of righteousness, then God can use us. Then God can use us because we actually get filled with the love of God. Get this. When you believe that you're going to be in heaven because Jesus made a way for you to get there, when you finally receive, it says the wages of sin is death, Romans 6, 23, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus. Ha ha. Eternal life is a gift through Jesus. Friends, I'm going to pause for a moment. Here's the big take home if you forget everything else I said. Here's the big take home. If you place your faith in Jesus and you start living through the eyes of eternity right now, I'm going to be in heaven because Jesus gave me the robe of his righteousness, which is what's going to make it possible for me to be in heaven. When you start living like that, you enter into the joy of the Lord. The love of God is poured in and through you to the world around you. And when you actually believe that you're going to be in heaven, get this, then you will be successful in inviting others to come to heaven too. Are you worried about your sons and your daughters that you, you think might not be in heaven? Start believing that you'll be there and you'll be successful in inviting them to come to heaven. When you believe in Jesus, when you believe the gospel, 
when you put on the robe of righteousness, when you start living through the eyes of eternity, when you actually believe what the Bible says, when you say, Jesus, I'm ready to be baptized by the power of the Holy Spirit, when you let him plant that faith the size of a mustard seed in your heart and you realize, I'm going to be in heaven, when you realize that, you're going to start inviting people to follow Jesus in a way that you, like never before, you're gonna be filled with God's love, you're gonna be filled with the excitement and energy. Friends, I've been preaching every single night. Tonight's night seven, tomorrow night is night eight. I've been doing Bible in a year every day. Friend, do you hear what I'm saying? I'm still full of energy, I'm still not tired, I'm still excited, and even though I'm 40 years old and since 24 until now, I've been going all over the world telling people about Jesus. I'm still not tired. People keep saying, Pastor Far, you're going to burn out. Pastor Far, you're going to die. Pastor Far, you can't possibly be serving Jesus from the time you wake up until you go to bed every night. For all of this time, you're going to burn out. We're telling you, you can't make it. You can't make it. You can't make it. And I'm like, you're right. I can't make it, but Jesus can. The reason why I'm still excited the reason why I still have energy, the reason why I'm still preaching and teaching, the reason why I'm reaching people for the kingdom is because Jesus is living in and through me. Allison says, I'm finding it difficult to be a witness for Jesus because I hate my job. Allison, I'm going to be praying for you. Okay, friends, um, in about 10 minutes here, I'm supposed to start the Bible in a Year Instagram Live with Joshua Paul Borum for Bible in a Year Day 27, 28, and 29. I'm not going to make it on time. Let me just say that. So let's try to aim for about 4.30, 5 o'clock. I'm, I'm heading over to the Paul Borum's Airbnb right now. We're going to get ready for the live. We're going to be going live again. Friends, I'm so excited because... We are literally going to be doing Bible in a year 27, 28, and 29, and we're going to be all caught up on July 29. It's t July 29 here in, I know, in Australia it's July 30, but I'm not going to be doing July 30 till tomorrow. So bear with me. I'm going to go get ready. I'm going to go get ready, and we're going to do Bible in a year 27, 28, and 29, which is day 8, 9, and 10. 208, 209, 210. Guys, can you believe it? 200 days, 210 days in? That means we only have 155 days left. 155 days left, and we will be through the Bible in a Year Instagram live challenge. Woot, woot. Woot, woot, woot. So, uh, I'm hoping around 4.30 or 5 o'clock my time. So, literally, come back in an hour. Come back in an hour, and we're going to be doing the Bible in a Year Instagram live for... July 27, 28, and 29. Okay. Thank you, Naomi, for the encouragement. Thank you, all of you, for being a part of the Bible in a Year Challenge. I hope that this live has been a blessing. I love all of you. Keep praying for me. Keep praying for me. The devil is trying everything he can to distract me, destroy me, uh, throw me offline, attack me. You know, yeah, because I'm preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ and him crucified, and so everybody's telling me, Stephen, you need to choose side in all these debates, and I'm like... No, 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 I don't need to, I do not need to preach the liberalism, I do not need to preach the legalism, I do not need to be a Republican or a Democrat, I don't need to choose any of these sides, I'm not choosing the Romans, I'm not choosing the Greeks, I'm not choosing the men, I'm not choosing the women, I'm not choosing sides in any of this stuff, why? Because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and when you have his love poured out through your heart, you love everybody, and then you're actually willing to do something for people, even if they're still sinners, because Jesus loved us when we were still sinners. Doesn't it make sense, people? I hope it does. God bless all of you. I love your souls. You're amazing. Tell people, listen, tell people, it's never too late to start the Bible in a Year Instagram Live Challenge. It's never too late to join. It's never too late to be part of this. The love of God is being poured out through his word. The Holy Spirit is changing our lives. There is nothing in all of creation that can separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Friends, Let's start turning our eyes upon Jesus. Let's look full in his wonderful face. Did you know that all of the things that seem so important in this world right now are not going to be important when we get to heaven? Right? There are so many things going on in our lives right now that we think are so important, but they're not going to be important when we get to heaven. Okay? So, so for whoever it is that you have a resentment against, for whatever church member you're mad at, for whatever person that... 
you had a relationship with that didn't work out, for whatever's going on in your life, friends, remember, there's things that we get so bent out of shape about. There's things that we get so upset about. There's things that we feel so broken about. There's stuff going on in our lives we feel like we can never overcome the sickness, poverty, relationships that, that don't work. There's like all kinds of things that happen in our life. And here's the thing that you need to know. Listen, when we get to heaven, none of that will matter. And if it won't matter in heaven, it doesn't matter here. That's not your focus. You don't need to spend all of your time worrying about that. Preach Christ and him crucified. Focus on the gospel. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through his son, Jesus Christ. Focus on that. Don't get hijacked by the debates. Don't get hijacked by the legalism. Don't get hijacked by the liberalism. Don't get hijacked by the politics. Do not let the negativity of the, the attacks of the devil on your life get you down. It's not going to help you. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his wonderful grace. Michael says, Mariners on a wind streak, wind not be important. That is true. Thank you for pointing it out. God bless all of you. Thank you for being a part of the Bible in your reading challenge. We will be going live again in an hour at 5 o'clock for Bible in a Year for July 27, 28, and 29, and then we are going to be all caught up. So excited about that. Finally caught up. Tonight is night seven of the meetings here in College Place. Okay? I'm going to be preaching tonight at the Village Church. The youth and young adult revival that's happening out here is blowing up. It's totally crazy and amazing. People, More people are coming every night. Harold has been there every night. Harold, how's it going at the Village Church for the Youth and Young Adult Revival meetings that are happening? We moved from the tent outside to the chapel inside, and now we're having to move into the Village Church sanctuary just to fit all of the people. It's crazy. It's unbelievable. I cannot believe how many people... We are having a revival. The Holy Spirit is being poured out in College Place right here at the Village Church, a youth and young adult revival is happening. People are getting excited about Jesus. People are inviting their neighbors to come to the meetings. It's growing every single night. We had to move out of the tent that we were under into the chapel. Now we're having to move into the main sanctuary of the Village Church. You guys, Jesus is coming. And I'm excited because we get to be a part of preaching the gospel of the kingdom into all the world as a witness to all the nations. Friends, will you do me a favor? Invite a friend. 